right, so I was rock climbing a lot about four or five years ago. I don't even remember, it was so long ago, but I was rock climbing a lot and I thought that I had just irritated something in my shoulder. I thought it was just like a basic sprain. So of course I kept climbing, I would ice it, maybe take a couple days off, but always go back and climb. Um, never really gave my body a chance to heal. And so my shoulder just kept getting worse and worse where it felt sore, it felt achy, like it just felt like muscles were, were pulling. Um, it was just really uncomfortable. I'd wake up in the morning and my, my shoulder would be just like kind of sticky up here. And so after probably about a year and a half is when I first went and seeked out help from a doctor. So I went to an orthopedic surgeon and first appointment he put in a cortisone shot without really explaining a lot about it to me. And so for the next two months, my shoulder was kind of better. It, it was functioning, it wasn't hurting as much. But after about a month and a half, two months, all the pain came back and nothing really changed. Um, he also recommended physical therapy, and so I was doing physical therapy. I ended up doing that for about six months with maybe a little bit of progress there, but not a ton. Um, I didn't really feel much difference in my shoulder. Um, it would feel a little bit better after appointments, but nothing ever lasted. And so I was still feeling all the same symptoms. I tried massage therapy after that. I uh, did that for a whole year where I went and got massages. I mean, it was kind of nice, but um, it didn't really fix anything. It would feel good for the next day or two, um, but the symptoms, they never really changed. It was always sore, it was always achy. Things were just pulling, it felt uncomfortable to climb. So I stopped climbing about that time and tried an ac acupuncturist. I tried physical therapy again, um, and nothing really seemed to work. I did a lot of yoga. I was hoping stretching would help, um, but nothing really, it, it just didn't help. My shoulder was the same. And so after about four years, I came and found Michael, and, <laughs> and we really focused on strength, strength training and kind of the mobility of my shoulder and helping it learn how to function again. Um, during that same time, I went to an orthopedic surgeon again to get an MRI and, and try to figure out an actual diagnosis of what was going on because nobody has, had given that to me before. And so with some consult from Michael and this orthopedic surgeon, I was able to get an MRI and nothing showed on it and so Basically, that means that there's a lot of inflammation going on in my shoulder that you can't see in an MRI. The orthopedic surgeon wanted to give me more cortisone shots, which I wasn't really wanting to do because it didn't help before. And so I didn't do that. And instead did eight weeks with Michael where we really just focused on building my shoulder up, um, making, making sure that it was functioning appropriately, relearning how to engage muscles that weren't really working and stabilizing the area as a whole. So, so we spent, we did, we started, we, we did eight weeks and that was probably about, we were figuring probably about 12 weeks ago, mm -hmm. 12 or 14 weeks ago that we started, that we did that together, right? Yes. So how did things feel? Well, so it's important, it's really important to note as part of the story too, that like your, your physical therapist and your ortho were both thinking within their own range, right? Your ortho wanted to be helpful, which is why they were suggesting a shot. Um, your physical therapist and your massage therapist and the acupuncturist, they were all doing the best that they could. What I think may have been missing was actually anybody looking at how your shoulder was moving. Like hopefully your physical therapist did, um, but they may not have, like for whatever reason, what they were thinking just didn't stick, it didn't make, it didn't make the difference that you needed. Mm -hmm. um, but it was also really important that you went to the orthopedic surgeon, right? Because it's one thing, if we know that things are structurally intact, right? If the, if the bones are where the bone should be and the muscles are where the muscle should be and things are structurally intact, then we can say, okay, we have some inflammation and we probably have something that's not moving very well and we can then deal with that. Um, but if it, you know, getting that, that MRI kind of cleared us for doing strength, the strength work that we wanted to do. Yeah, for sure. And it definitely helped me build the confidence to address it without thinking, oh, I'm just going to hurt it again. I'm just yeah. going to keep hurting it without any progress. So knowing that nothing was structurally wrong 
helped me have confidence in what you and I were working on. Yeah, yeah so the first couple of appointments, um, during the appointment, my shoulder would slowly like feel like warmed up and feel like it was functioning appropriately again, which I wasn't super bought in yet because I was like, okay, like it's starting to feel a little bit better, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. And that feeling would probably last two or three days, the first couple appointments. But then as we got to the third or fourth appointment, it started lasting the whole week where my shoulder wasn't bothering me from day to day. Um, it felt strong, it felt stable, and I could feel different muscles engaging that weren't engaging beforehand. And then by the fifth, sixth, seventh appointment, I was just feeling strong, my shoulder was feeling stable. I felt like I had the skills to kind of reset when I had like slept on my shoulder wrong or like used it in a weird way. Um, you had taught me the things that I needed to, to restabilize it. And, and feel like it was functioning appropriately again and do the exercises that kind of put it back where it needed to be. Um, even doing activities like lifting heavy objects, I was able to think through the process of like, okay, what muscles should be functioning right now so that my shoulder is supported in this action. Yeah. And that really, it, it was like, a, it clicked for me to yeah. be able to function in general. Um, in, in a good way that helps my shoulder rather than hurt it. Yeah, and so what we're gonna so what we're gonna do um, so Tiffany and I are gonna walk through some of the exercises that we used to get that shoulder feeling really good because I want because I want you know everyone who's watching this to have that. Um, and the thing that's important to note too is the goal. Our, the in, Tiffany wanted her you wanted your shoulder to stop hurting. I wanted your shoulder to stop hurting. But I probably made it really clear on like day one and day two. But like my job is not to actually deal with the pain, it's mm -hmm. to try to improve how things are moving. And then often we see a resolution of pain as a result of that. And if we didn't, then we would have gone back to the ortho or the PT and said, yeah. the, the, what should have worked didn't work. Now we need to kind of like kick this up a notch. But we, but we, were, we were lucky, right? Like we, we've, we've seen that progress. So the first thing that, that's important for us to understand is actually some anatomy of the shoulder. And I actually dislike the term, the shoulder we should generally be talking about the shoulder complex. And I'm gonna point some stuff out on Tiffany so you make this clear. Um, so while she's standing here, I'm just gonna poke around a little bit. Is it okay if I poke you some? Okay. Yep. So we have the ambulance going by. So we have the upper arm bone, the humerus. We have the, the collar bone, the clavicle coming across. We have the shoulder blade on the back. And then we have the rib cage all through here. And all of those things actually work together to create the motion that we would describe to the shoulder. Like as a kid, we're taught in middle school science that the shoulder is a ball and socket joint like the hip. And it is, except that socket is a really dynamic thing. On your hip, it's just the pelvis that makes up the socket, that bowl. Um, but on the shoulder, that socket or bowl is created by the intersection of all of these various bones. And with all of those bones, there's also a ton of small muscle. And so whenever someone's dealing with shoulder pain, the first thing we have to consider is, is it one of these small muscles in the shoulder that's problematic, or is it a big muscle? And the problem can be a big muscle that is making a small muscle do too much work. So that wasn't what was going on for Tiffany, but that's often a problem that we have too, is the little muscles of the rotator cuff deep right through here get pissed off because the bigger muscles of the shoulder aren't working very well, or of the shoulder complex. Anatomy real quick, or muscle anatomy. Um, bicep, front of the arm, tricep, back of the arm. Delt, the cap on top of the shoulder, front, middle, rear components. Um, the pec comes right in from the arm, basically comes from this seam, down to underneath the, into the chest or underneath the breast. Um, will you rotate this way for me? And then on the back side, we're gonna have upper trap or trap one, mid trap through the center, low trap down. We've got the lat coming in from the side and then Terry's major cutting right underneath the armpit. Um, if, you're, if you're wearing a sports bra, then Terry's major is basically sitting right on top of that sports bra. And all of these muscles need to work together to make the shoulder work right. There are also deeper and smaller muscles. I'm not gonna dig into the muscles of the rotator cuff. That's just not my domain. My domain is largely the bigger ones. What was going on for Tiffany a lot was a lot of tension up through here, right? I know, I'm, I know we're on the wrong side, but like it was up in this top of shoulder. And an easy way to think of this is that these guys are doing a lot of work because all of their friends through this other 300 or 270 degrees of the shoulder complex aren't. Right? We've got one muscle group that's doing a ton of work, 
And these are important, they can be really strong. They're not bad guys, but if they are the only one helping out, then shit doesn't work very well. Um, I'll have you rotate one more time so we can see your back. So what I'm gonna have Tiffany do is reach her arms out to the sides. And will you move your, or can I move your ponytail over your shoulder? Yeah. Thanks, great. So palms forward for me. And what Tiffany is gonna do is really slowly sweep her arms up overhead. And I'm gonna have her stop at a, at a point. Now's pretty darn good. So just hang out here for a second. And I hope you guys can see the distance between her left shoulder and her right shoulder in that comparison. And I'm not, I'm not gonna judge what's going on. I'm not gonna try to d dive too deep into this one right now, but it's uneven. Um, and in fact, I'll, you guys will just have to take my word for it. This little muscle right here, upper trap on the right, is a lot more engaged than upper trap on the left. That upper trap on the left is doing some work because it's helping to support. This one on the right was doing way too much work. Part of what's going on here is this shoulder blade isn't rotating quite the way we want it to. So the first thing we work on is shoulder rotation. This is the Snow Angel, and we're gonna use the crossover symmetry bands today because we already have them set up. You don't need fancy bands like this. Simple uh, elastic bands trapped in a door frame can work pretty well. What we wanna do is set a fairly high angle uh, for the shoulder, so we're gonna cross the bands in front our position is starting palms down at the sides, and we're gonna simply bring the arms wide up overhead, and then wide and back down to the sides. So again, arms go wide, hands can come a little bit forward of the line of the ears, especially if the shoulder's been tweaked. We want this to feel like a smooth movement through the whole range of motion. And we're primarily trying to create an upwards and outwards rotation of the shoulder blade. So if I had my hand on someone's right shoulder blade, as they go through this exercise, they should be pulling my hand up and then pulling my hand back down. In our mission to get the shoulders working better and hopefully therefore also feeling better, the lat, the big muscle of the back is a, is a prime driver. It's a big concern. And I know lots of people who are really strong who don't have a good neurological connection, a good mind-muscle connection with their lat. And so we're gonna use a single band in order to, to get that. We need a band that's got a little bit of resistance to it. This can't be tight, this can't be terribly easy. And I'm just gonna set myself up so that band is in a straight line from the anchor all the way to my shoulder. I'm gonna pull the elbow in. And then I'm actually gonna flex this elbow down like I'm trying to squeeze a lemon inside my armpit. I'm gonna hold that flex, I'm gonna hold that muscle tension, and then I'm gonna slowly let my arm come forward. And the moment you lose that sensation, the moment you can no longer flex hard, come back in, reset the flex, and then slowly bring that arm forward, and then we'll repeat. And I really like sets of five to eight of this and you can go as far forward with the band as you like, just be sure that you don't lose that muscular tension. And yes, the objective is, the, the goal is to be able to go to full elbow extension, full arm extension, without losing that flex in the lat. That would actually tell us that, that you have full range of motion, full control through that particular muscle. All right, next up, um, I'm gonna have Tiffany go through this pec engagement exercise that I really love, because again, it lets us test range of motion. So Tiffany's got a band, her arm is at 90 degrees to her shoulder, almost, bring your hand in another inch in, and she's got a band that's pulling it 90 degrees out. It doesn't have to be exact, you don't need a protractor. Tiffany's gonna also bring her left hand across into her right armpit so that she can feel that tendon popping up, because if the tendon pops up, it's a really good sign that the muscle underneath it is working. And then all she's gonna do is draw some small circles in space with that arm. And the circles should start pretty small and then you can make them as big as you want as long as you don't break the golden rule which is keep engagement in the muscle that we're after. And this is not an exercise that's gonna make your pec really big or really strong, but it is the exercise that teaches your brain how to use it and how to connect to it. We generally do 10 going in and then Tiffany, why don't you rotate 10 going out, perfect. And so, you know, Tiffany was saying a couple minutes ago that she has some exercises that she goes through when she feels like she needs to reset her shoulder. Um, this is certainly on my list. If my shoulder is feeling bad, and for me it's generally the left side, like this brings, this brings it back into the muscles that should be doing the work. 
and then there is a reversal for that. So great, and then again circles. So Tiffany is again set up 90 degree band to arm, 90 degree arm to shoulder or arm to rib cage, and here we can still get some engagement into the pack, but most of it's actually going to sit back here. And Tiffany's job is to ensure that her sensation doesn't sit up into the top of the shoulder, into the neck, which I'd imagine there's just a tiny bit right now, but most of that heat should be getting built around the shoulder blade and between the head of the humerus and the back and, the, and into the uh, edge of the shoulder. So if we, do, if we do nothing else other than the lat pull and squeeze, the, the pec circles and then the rear shoulder circles, this alone might make a pretty big difference for us. Um, what we're gonna do now is actually scale up the challenge and go to a couple more advanced things where position really matters. These are like almost hard to get wrong as long as you feel it right. But we're gonna go to a couple things that are a little bit more advanced, a little bit more challenging. Let's look at the one-armed overhead press. And just before the camera started rolling again, Tiffany said, I don't remember this one exactly, but I remember it being magical. And, and I have found it, I've really found it to be that for myself too especially when, when tension sits in the upper shoulder, and we assume, again, it's because trap one is doing all the work because lat's not engaging well enough, or other muscles below the shoulder aren't, aren't working very well. This is a way of encouraging those muscles below the shoulder to work well with a couple of caveats, right? The, the, the right exercise performed poorly is gonna make things worse, um, and every once in a while, a good exercise isn't necessarily the right exercise. We're walking through the things that worked really well for Tiffany and might work well for other people with shoulder pain. So we, what we have here is a piece of two-inch PVC uh, cut to four feet. Yeah, I want to say it's four feet or three feet in length. Um, it's filled with pebbles. It has a gr it has a total weight of about 18 pounds. So it's not it's not empty, right? It, it's not hollow, but it also doesn't weigh a ton. And that's really important is we need to have enough load into this exercise that there's some challenge, but it shouldn't be a struggle. Um, it should never feel scary. If you're dealing with an injury and something starts to feel scary, your brain is gonna process it as scary and then the likelihood of things going sideways goes way up. So I'll have Tiffany bring this, she's gonna find the midpoint in the PVC. She's gonna bring it up and set, set it so that it is going, it is on top of her shoulder and with some of it going behind her head. Yep, great and then go ahead and drive that thing all the way to the ceiling, push it all the way up. And then, here's where things really matter, and I'm gonna torture her by making her hold this thing overhead for about 30 seconds. Tiffany is gonna pretend like this whole room has been filled with peanut butter or Nutella or chocolate sauce, really whatever you like, and she is going to push her, her elbow down. So go ahead and start pushing your elbow down into my, into my hand, into my finger, great. And then go back up. So a few things here, and you can keep going with this. She's got the PVC going behind her head. Her elbow is pointing out to the side as far as it could go. She could probably rotate this elbow back a few more degrees even. There we go. And then the effort that she's feeling should be a pull down into this lat, down into this side of the armpit. I'm gonna have you do two more, but I want you to go really slow. I want you to feel like there's a rubber band that you have to pull down from the ceiling. You're pulling yourself down. The harder you work on the pull, the more we're gonna get out of this. Great, and this is a really nice pace here. Inhale, elbow is wide, hand is wide. This is great. And go ahead and relax. Okay, right. is, that, is that still feeling good? Yeah, okay. that feels great. Great, so what we're, the, what's really important with that one-armed press, we're, this is not a task that we necessarily train to get heavy. Like you can go heavy with this, it's kind of fun to go heavy, but if you're dealing with something that feels tweaking in the shoulder, stay away from heavy. Just find enough load that you have to actively work against gravity. When you get really good at this, it's actually fun to do it without any load at all and just pretend like you're hanging on to something and pretend like gravity is pulling you down really hard and you're gonna fight really hard. The more load you feel on top of the shoulder, the less effective it is. The more that you can get almost a cramp down the side of the body and into the, into the side of the rib cage, the better, because that's the lat and that's the thing that we're inherently after. And we're really kind of taking the lat inactivity uh, as, a big, as a big part of this equation, big part of what's going wrong. So that was the one-armed uh, one overhead press. We started by getting Tiffany to feel muscles around the shoulder, the pec, the lat, and then we started challenging them. The, we're gonna go to a, we're gonna go to a pull down we're gonna actually work two different versions of this. And 
it's really important to remember that it's not just what we do that matters, but it's also how we do it. And like the right exercise performed poorly, no good or different results. Um, a suboptimal exercise performed really well can actually get us a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of progress. So we've got a lat, we've got a lat pull down setup here. If you're going to a commercial gym, this is really easy. This is thirty dollars. You know, this is just thirty dollars worth of stuff from REI and Home Depot. So I'm gonna have Tiffany grab the handles, and we're gonna first go to a version of the pull down that is actually centered on the lat. So I'm gonna sit, Tiffany. I'm gonna sit right behind you, okay. and. Here, is, here are the things that matter the most. First is that Tiffany is going to keep her hands fairly wide on the bar. Um, she's going to actually lean herself a little bit forward and then pull her shoulders back like she's trying to puff up her chest. And you guys don't have the right camera angle, but her, these guys just popped out. Her shoulder blades and her lats just got really wide on, just above her sports bra, which is fantastic. It tells us that she's already loading into the right stuff. Um, Tiffany knows this, but I'll remind you guys, we don't want to let the shoulders come up to the ears. We always want to stay slightly pulled down, especially if we're rehabbing something. Once we get stronger, we can allow for a little bit more movement, but it, from a rehab perspective, we really want to stay braced down. So I'll have Tiffany just go for five of these. That's it, right? She's pulling her hands down towards, down to the line of her chest. She's not trying to go really low. I am going to challenge her on this one to pull down squeeze and flex into the sides, and then maintain that as she goes back out. And her arms don't go quite as far that time. That's okay, right? Again, we want to use the range of